Hi guys, so this is your video on how to format your footnotes. So I am on Blackboard in your fact sheet folder, those assignments, and then the fact sheet folder right here. And so I'm just going to take you through uh, a couple of the documents that I have up here to just show you what I'm looking for for the footnotes. So the sample footnotes is where I'm going to start for right now. And so when you open it, you'll see that it's already formatted here, but I do want to um, kind of put it back to its original states. Okay, so now it's just, you know, one column and you see the footnotes there, so we're, we'll go through this right now. So what I've done is I just copied and pasted a little um, Huffington Post article here just so we can kind of see um, how to do the footnotes. So um, you'll notice here there's a little one. Right, so wherever you want to add a footnote, which will typically be at the end of your line, you notice all the little numbers are at the end of the line. Wherever you want your footnote to go, that's where you need to have your cursor. And then you go to references and insert footnote. Okay, and then it just, the one will appear, I'll just show you really quickly. The one will appear and then it just automatically draws the line right here. And then it adds the footnote right here. And then you just need to decide what goes in this little space, which is what I will focus on now. So um, I've already done this, so let me delete this one. To delete, all you do is hit backspace, right? And then it deletes down there, and then you can also delete this guy right here. There you go. And you can see that it just deleted it. Okay. And so you have to kind of decide what goes in this little space. Now, what I've done is I've just decided that this first source, I'll show you, this would be how to do a book. So if this first source right here is from a book, this is what you would put right here uh, for the footnote, for the first footnote. First name, last name, title of the book, parenthesis, publish, publishing city, colon, publishing company, comma, year, and parenthesis, comma, page number. So here for the citation, you would have the specific page number where you got the source. And then in your bibliography, it would be the page range um, of the whole article or whatever you're using. And so let me jump now back to Blackboard. So to determine exactly what goes in that space, you can click on the Chicago formatting link right here. Okay, and so what you would wanna do, most of you will be using web sources, so you can kind of just scroll through here. Um, it tells you how to do the footnote and how to do the bibliography entry, okay? so you can find here, here's an online journal, here's how you would do the footnote, and here's how you would do the bibliography. Web page, um, no known author, unknown publication data, blog, a podcast, etc. These are all the web sources. Um, and then you can see here, you know, there's interviews here, um, unpub unpublished, this would be if you did your own interview right here. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can cite. Uh, you can also do um, periodicals if you wanted to, journals, right? Uh, so you can just scroll through and try to find your exact source, right? Um, and that will determine, again, what goes in the space here. Now, the first time that you use the footnote, okay, you will include almost all of the bibliographic information, okay? The second, third, fourth time, you don't need to include this whole citation anymore. So if you notice, um, for source number three, this one is going to be the same as this one. So I've indicated that here with the highlight. So let me just explain further. If this source right here is the same as this source here, it's one and three, when you scroll down to the footnotes, you indicate that by using the same last name that you had from number one and then the page number. And then also it's actually going to ask you for um, basically a shortened title of the book. But notice how much shorter number three is than number one because again, this is the second time now that you're using the source, okay? Um, now let's look at number two. So say number one and three are the same, but number two is a different source. So number two, you would have the whole citation because it's the first time that you're using it, right? And now, if you can see, number six is the second place where I'm using the same source from number two because the last names are the same, right? And so, again, 
you would just probably include something like uh, democracy and other neoliberal. So Chicago format says you could shorten the title down to four words or less. Okay, and now this indicates here, this is the second time now that you're using this source. Okay, so again, you only include the whole citation the first time that you use it. You use a, use a shortened version the second, third, tenth time you use the source. So uh, just to kind of indicate here, okay, this one and this one are from the same place. Okay, two is the first time I used it, six is the second time. This number one is the first time I've used number one, number three is the second time I've used number one. Okay, now let's talk about this IBID. Okay, IBID means the same in Latin. Okay, so, and actually there should be a period comma there, IBID means the same. So this suggests to me that number four is the same as number three, just with a different page number. And now number five is also the same as number four, which is also the same as number three. So you can only use IBID if the source above it is exactly the same. Okay, so IBID means it's the same as the one above. So five is the same as the number four. Number four is the same as number three. You cannot use an IBID if there's any sources in between, right? Because that's confusing. IBID only means it's the same as the one above it. And that's just a way for you to shorten your citation even further, okay? So once you actually use the source the first time, I think this should be pretty simple. Um, because like I said, once you use it the second time, it's shortened, and then if it's an IBID, all you have to put is IBID. Now say, um, say number four is on the exact same page as number three, then you don't need to put a page number. Okay, IBID, same page, which is telling me it's um, this last name, and it's also on page 619. Okay, um, so that is essentially footnotes. Now, Again, the majority of what you'll need to do is on this website here. You'll just have to go through and, and look at the sources that you're using, and then you will have to determine uh, the formatting for your footnotes versus your bibliography. Now keep in mind, the bibliography is essentially your Works Cited page. Okay, so what I've also provided you on Blackboard, this is a sample Chicago style paper. Now the only thing that I want you to pay attention to in this document is how they do the footnotes and the bibliography. Okay, don't worry about all the spacing rules um, or the cover page. You don't need a cover page uh, because you guys are going to format it and lay it out exactly the way you want. But I do want you to pay attention to, you know, the arrows here. They're pointing to the different footnotes and it tells you here, footnote one comprise, comprises a complete bibliographic note citation for a book. Uh, slightly different bibliography entry. Subsequent note citations can and should be shortened to Dean, right here, 30. When all sources are cited in a full in full in a bibliography, the shortened version can and should be used from the first note forward. Shortening, shortening usually comprises the author's last name and a keyword version of the title in four or fewer words. So for example, there we see Jody Dean, number one. Now when we use Dean again, let's see, I'm sorry, here's one actually right here. So David Harvey, the full citation, and then shortened Harvey, right? Here's an IBID. IBID 44 means it's still cont, just a different page number. Okay, these two IBIDs mean they're the same as number three, which is Harvey. Okay, and again, you can kind of go through here and there's little uh, notes on the side to tell you exactly what's going on with each of these citations. And then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there is a bibliography, and it's very similar to a work cited in MLA. Again, the only difference is, is that you're using slightly different information in a slightly different order. And this, again, shows you how to do that, right? The B is all the bibliographic information. Now, if you find a bunch of sources on your SDSU library website, remember that you can email yourself the citation for the bibliography. And that will be really helpful because you can simply just copy and paste. So I'm just going to do a very, very, very quick search here. Articles, stereotypes of women, for example. Okay. All right, so say you like this first source. Okay, click on it. Now, you can click on citation 
and then Chicago right here, and then all you have to do is copy and paste this into your bibliography. So in terms of the bibliography, that should be really, really easy if you're using an SDSU library source. And then you can just go to the OWL Purdue website to see how to just change that slightly when you do your first footnote. So the first footnote for this one would be almost everything here, except it would just be the single page where you got that specific quote. And then you might take a couple of other things out. And then the second time you use it, it would just be a bear, uh, probably warm, but maybe not. 360. Okay, um, so hopefully that was helpful for you with footnotes. Again, everything that you need should be right there on Blackboard for you. So uh, please email me if you have any questions. We can also go over your footnotes in conferences if you'd like next week. So um, be sure to, to sign up for a conference if you'd like to go over your fact sheet. I see there's still um, a bunch of spaces available next week, so be sure to do that. All right, have a great day, guys.